Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Welcome back to Data Structures and Game Maker. Today it's time to talk about the priority queue. So the priority queue, if you're not familiar, may sound like another data structure that exists in Game Maker that I've talked about before, which is just the regular queue. And the queue, if you recall, is a simple data structure in which data has to be removed in the same order that it was added. I'll have a link to that video on screen. Priority queues take this a step further. Priority queues are essentially self-sorting lists. You can create one, as always, with, I'm going to call it PQ is going to equal, actually, no, I'm not, because I'm not going to spell that correctly ever. I'm just going to say PQ, the two letters, is going to be DS priority create. When you're done, as always, DS, DS priority destroy. Make sure, that you, uh, make sure that you delete your data structures when you're done with them so that you don't have any memory leaks. So when you add stuff to a regular queue, the terminology is dsq, nq, nq, not endq. And when you remove something from a regular queue, the terminology is dsq, dq. Uh, when it comes to priority queues, the uh, we don't have any special words. We just say ds priority add. And when we delete something from a priority queue, it's just ds priority delete min or delete max. And when you delete something from a priority queue, you can say either DS, I can't even spell the word priority, DS priority, delete min or delete max or delete value. Uh, deleting stuff from a priority queue is slightly more involved than deleting stuff from a regular queue. I will get to that in due time. Anyway, when you add something to a priority queue, you can have a, you, you have the queue that you're adding to, so PQ. You have the value that you're adding to it, and you have the priority that you're going to give it. Now, because priority queues are probably the most abstract of the game maker data structures, I am going to whip out the go-to analogy that I use whenever I want to describe a priority queue to someone, and that is going to be in terms of Pokemon battles. Every contestant on the battlefield gets to choose their move at the beginning of each turn, and then whichever pocket monster has the highest speed stat gets to go first, whichever pocket monster has the lowest speed stat gets to go last, there are additional mechanics in Pokemon which can affect turn order, such as move priority and switching, but I'm not going to be involving that today. So, in the blue corner, we have Indie Punch the Volcarona. You can see her stats on screen right now. The important one is the speed stat of 328. We also have Zenith the Venusaur, speed stat of 264. In the red corner, and I realize that this boxing ring analogy actually works because these, these DSs that I'm using are blue and red, respectively. Uh, we have Radiance the Dragonite, speed stat of 259. And we have Steven Loney, the Hydreigon, speed stat of 295. And also, when I uh, when I Pokegen these these monsters, I was not paying any attention to the gender. I am really sorry uh, for those of you whose whose genders I mixed up on these Pokemon. Uh, Steven Loney, I I know for a fact I got wrong. Zenith the Venusaur and Indie Punch the Volcarona. I don't actually know your genders, but I I really hope I didn't get those wrong too. And if I did, I'm very very sorry. I uh, I was not paying attention when I was genning these things last night. Anyway, let's get this battle started. So I am not going to write an entire turn-based battle system just for this, just for the purposes of this demo. That would be way, way overkill. So instead, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to play pretend, do it on the command line, if you will. So first, let us add our contestants to the uh, to the priority queue. So first, we have Radiance the Dragonite, and I'm going to just go with your uh, just go with your nicknames. Actually, you know what? Let me go. Let me go with your actual monster names. Uh, just to uh, just to make it easier to keep straight and you have a speed stat of What was it 259 okay next DS? priority add to the priority queue um, Hydreigon Steven Loney the 8-bit warrior you have a speed stat of 295 uh, next on the uh, on the blue team we are going to DS priority add PQ, um, Volcarona, who has a speed stat of 328 and defunds the Volcarona. And lastly, DS, priority, add, PQ, um, let's see, Venusaur. Did I spell Venusaur correctly? I think I did. Venusaur is the only one of these, of these pocket monsters whose, uh, whose names aren't nine characters long. That's interesting. I just pulled random things off the Smogon black and white OU, OU page. 
there was not exactly what one might call any rhyme or reason to, uh, to what I was choosing to use here. Anyway, you have a speed stat of 264. So if I were to let this play out, we can use the DS priority delete uh, delete max function, and this will get the value at the beginning of each priority key, remove it, and return it. So we can say P key, we can DS priority delete max. So if I were to run this game and let this play out, we are going to first have Indy Punch the Volcarona going first with a speed stat of 328. Second, we are going to have Steven Loney the Hydreigon with a speed stat of 295. Third, we are going to have Zenith the Venusaur with a speed stat of 264. And coming in last, we have me, the Dragonite, with a speed stat of 259. I am the slowest one on the battlefield, apparently. If the four of us ever uh, ever meet in real life, we've, we've got to have a foot race to, to sort this out for real. Anyway, if we were to do this again, some of you who are familiar with the uh, competitive metagame of Pokémon may be aware that some of the moves that I used on that on that last round will increase the speed stat of the said pocket monsters who use them. Notably, uh, Volcarona's Quiver Dance will raise Volcarona Indie Punch's speed by 50% by one stage, and Venusaur used Sunny Day, which itself is not a speed increasing move, but it will increase the speed of any, uh, of any pocket monster on the battlefield that has chlorophyll for the ability by a factor of two, uh, which Zenith Venusaur does. And these uh, these speed modifiers will be factored in the next time around. The next time we uh, we select our moves and and uh, and have a go. So this is going to affect turn order. So if I were to run this again to uh, to simulate the second turn, we are going to see that first we now have Venusaur, uh, Zenith Venusaur coming in first with a speed stat of 528. I believe that is. If I were to multiply that by 264 by two. Uh, second, we have Indie Punch the Volcarona. I am not going to do that math in my head. Whatever 328 times 1.5 is rounded down by the way when it comes to Pokemon but nevertheless and after that we have Steven Loney the Hydreigon with a speed stat of 295 and bringing in bringing in last place once again I am 0 for 2 here in terms of a uh, in terms of the foot race uh, Radiance the Dragonite 259 okay that was fun um, in addition to deleting the maximum priority from a priority queue you can also delete from the other end you can you can read or delete the minimum priority in a priority queue, and this will essentially evaluate speed in reverse order. You might think about if, um, continuing the Pokemon metaphor, if Trick Room is in effect, uh, if I were to run the game by deleting Min instead of Max, we would instead have Dragonite, Hydreigon, Volcarona, and then Venusaur in reverse order. You can also, as you can do with stacks and regular queues, you can... Um, instead of, uh, instead of deleting the minimum or maximum priority from a priority queue, you can just simply find min and find max. And that will allow you to see what's on the uh, on the top and the bottom of the priority queue without removing it. And this will tell us that the minimum value in the priority queue is me. And the maximum value in the priority queue is Venusaur. So you can also, uh, we also have the ability to DS priority delete value. And that is going to take two arguments. That is going to take the priority queue, and that is going to take the value that we want to remove. So let's imagine for the sake of argument that Volcarona decides to go and use Bug Buzz on Hydreigon, and that is a super effective hit. That is going to take Steven Loney down before he's able to get his attack off. Sorry, Steven. And uh, to, uh, to simulate that, to represent that, we can say DS priority delete value, uh, the priority queue, and Hydreigon, and... If I, were to, uh, if I were to run this game now, we would see the simulation playing out. Venusaur going first, Volcarona going second. No Hydreigon, because Hydreigon has been removed from the uh, the turn order, thanks to being KO'd. And finally, Dragonite, who is still coming in last, because... I don't know, those legs don't look like they're built for running, if you ask me. Okay, what else is there? How much, how much farther can I take this Pokémon metaphor? So there's the usual functions. There's DS Priority Clear for emptying the contents of a priority queue. There's DS... Priority write, there's DS priority read, there's DS priority size. No, don't open, don't open Windows Explorer. There's DS priority size. I don't think I have to explain what DS priority clear do and DS priority size. I don't think I have to explain those. 
Uh, GS priority write and read again as always those are for saving and loading a pr the contents of a priority queue to a um to a string or to a file or to whatever you want I don't really recommend doing that uh, it's not something you have to do often anyway okay priority queues are kind of fun uh, they're not the most useful data structure ever they are they do have their uses when it comes to representing things such as turn-based battles as I as I uh, put on display here realistically you can do pretty much everything that you can do with a priority queue with either uh, a simple array using the array sort function to uh, to put the contents of an array in order in some in some way or another, or the ds list, which also has a sort function, which allows you to put the contents of a ds list in order in some way or another. Um, overall, for things like this, arrays and array sort are probably more useful than ds lists and ds list sort because uh, array sort is newer and it gives you more ways, more control over how the array is sorted but that's perhaps a story for another day. When I did the DS Maps video not too long ago, I alluded to the fact that back in the old days of GameMaker 8 and prior, um, DS Maps were implemented as binary search trees rather than hash maps. And binary search trees also have the property that they are a self-sorting data structure. Uh, they are a different self-sorting data structure than the priority queue. The priority queue is a heap internally rather than a binary search tree. But what that meant is that in the days of like 2010, 2011, um, DS maps and priority queues actually provided a lot of the same functionality. In fact, I might I might go as far as to say that uh, DS maps had the edge back in the day because uh, you could iterate over them, which you can't really do with a priority queue. At least not easily. Is there just a? Are there any functions for just getting like iterating over priorities? I don't think there is. No, there is no DS priority find next priority or anything like that. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. As with the other data structures videos, no code this time. There will be no GitHub repository. This is just a short, a short snippet of example code. However, I do try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like these, and one let's make a tower defense game. So if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, I would appreciate that. There are links to that in all the usual places. You can see your name in the credits, see yourself shouted out at the end, see a preview of my future plans, that sort of thing. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. By the way, I do get requested periodically to make videos on turn-based battles like this, like actually implementing them, not just, the, not just calculating turn priority. I do want to make videos on that eventually, but that's going to be a bit of a big subject. And if slash when I get around to that, it's probably going to be in the form of a long-running series such as the... Uh, another let's make a game like the tower defense series. I won't say I'm not going to do it. I do definitely want to, but it probably isn't going to be for a little while. Special thanks to Connor, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.